Hello viewers, in this session, we are going to discuss about the atmospheric effects on microwave communication. Okay, let's start with our discussion about the atmosphere. So, there are two different types of atmospheric, uh, atmosphere are there in this diagram. So, one is the dense atmosphere and another one is the, is the thin atmosphere. So, how packet travels or electromagnetic waves travels in both the atmosphere? Okay. For example, in thin atmosphere, the packet travels very fast and in dense atmosphere, the packet travels very slowly. Why it is behaving like that? So, if you look at the electromagnetic wave's velocity, it is equivalent to speed of light divided by refractive index. So, speed of light is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second, which is always constant. So, the only parameters which keep on changing is refractive index. So, the refractive index keeps changing when the atmosphere uh, condition also changes. For example, for dense atmosphere, the atmospheric and refractive index value is very high. So, the velocity is very low. That is why this electromagnetic wave travels with in a low speed. But if you are considering the thin atmosphere, the refractive index value is very low. So, that is why the velocity of this electromagnetic wave is very fast. Okay, keep these things in mind. Let us jump on to the next one. Okay, so in summary, the speed of the electromagnetic waves is depends upon the refractive index and the refractive index is depend upon the atmospheric density and the atmospheric density is depends upon three factors. One is pressure, humidity and temperature and do not forget about this formula. The only uh, variable is refractive index here. Okay, then let us see the effect of absorption in electromagnetic waves. Okay. So, in general, the earth consists of two gases. One is oxygen, another one is water vapor. Both these gases used to absorb the electromagnetic energy. So, when you are using 50 to 60 gigahertz frequency in your microwave communication, the oxygen molecules absorbs more uh, energy from electromagnetic waves. So, uh, since oxygen is everywhere, that is constant throughout the earth, it is highly recommended that we should not use 50 or 60 gigahertz frequency in a longer hops. Okay, and when you consider the water vapor, uh, the attenuation is quite high when you are using 20 gigahertz frequency. So, in general, the rule of thumb is lower the frequency, lower the absorption. And then the effects of rain attenuation. So, the rain attenuation when you are using a 6 GHz microwave frequency is 0 0.001 dB per kilometer. But the, when you are jumping into 12 GHz, it, it also jumps to 10 dB per kilometer. So, if frequency increases, the attenuation also keep on increases. No? But uh, the only advantage in rain attenuation is, uh, for example, we have a microwave link of uh, 3 kilometer. The entire 3 kilometer will not experience the rainfall. So, hardly a 500 meter, 400 meter or sometimes 1.5 kilometer experience rainfall and the other part of the link uh, does not have any rainfall. So, that saves a microwave link uh, from a rainfall. Okay, let us go to the another topic called a refraction. What is refraction? Refraction is nothing but it is a bending of microwave wave. So, what will be the effect of refraction in microwave communication? It causes the microwave beam to move uh, either uh, upward or downward from its line of sight path. So, if refraction occurs in a microwave communication, then we can't, the receiver antenna can't able to trap the microwave energy. Okay, the same funda applies here also. So, microwave beam travels from the dense air to thin air, it, it used to bend. So, how much it will bend? Normally, we used to compare this bending with the uh, radius of the earth curvature. Normally, in general scenario, the microwave beam travels more than the curvature of the earth. So, how we measured it? That is measured in terms of k factor. So, k factor is equal to uh, effective earth radius divided by true earth radius. So, here the detailed formula is given here. It is depends upon two components. N is the refractive index and H is the height of uh, height. Okay. So, for different kinds of K values, the microwave beam travels in a different direction, either upward or straight or in the downwards. Let us see that the next slide. In some cases, in some peculiar cases, uh, the ducting scenario happens. 
so what is what will happen if a cool uh, uh, if some cases uh, in some atmospheric conditions uh, the temperature inversion occurs so what will happen uh, refractive index um, uh, high the, the high density atmospheric is surrounded by a low density atmospheric layers so in this uh, in this case it is acting like a fiber optics for example in fiber optic there are two things one is core and cladding the refractive index of core is higher than the uh, refractive index index of cladding so when uh, my optical wave um, travels inside uh, from cladding to core in an uh, angle of incidence the wave will get internally reflected so this is called internal reflection so the same scenario applicable in microwave beam also so the dense atmosphere is uh, is captured by a thin atmospheric layers so what will happen microwave beam enters into the uh, enters into this area with an angle of incidence then it gets totally internally reflected so this microwave beam will not be captured by this fellow so this is called as ducting normally it happens over the wide uh, wide water bodies and uh, so that's why we, it is re it's not recommended to plan a microwave link uh, above the water bodies okay let's see the effect of k factor so uh, remember the k factor is nothing but effective earth radius divided by true earth radius and we have it depends upon the refractive index and the height okay k has four different scenarios when a, when the k value is less than 0 okay the k is less than when a warm air is trapped when a cold air is trapped in warm air warm air then the k value will go less than 0 okay and when k is value is less than 4 by 3 whenever this value in this portion of the equation if it goes high then what will happen the k value will automatically get reduced so when this value goes high whenever the atmospheric condition or the atmospheric refractive index is high that is an uh, atmospheric density is high then k value will become less than 4 by 3 okay k is greater than 4 by 3 whenever this value is very less small then k va value is always automatically increased so when this value will decrease the refractive index is less than uh, compared to the other atmospheric conditions so in warm areas this refractive index is very less so obviously k factor is greater than 4 by 4 by 3 so in some cases whenever there is a steep rise from the surface of the earth to the towards the atmosphere the k value is, um, will, will be equal to infinitive so how the wave travels here when k is less than uh, k is minus 1 the ray curvature is twice earth curvature when k is infinitive curvature of ray is equal to curvature of earth and when k is 1 no atmospheric ray bending is there the, the wave will travels in a straight line if it is uh, k is equal to 2 by 3 then ray curvature is half of and opposite in direction to earth curvature thank you all thanks for your time